Welcome to Counters. In this lesson, we're going to be looking at the sales journal. We're going to explain what it is, look at the format for the sales journal, and go through some examples in doing the sales journal. In the example that we're going to look at, we're going to ignore VAT. We've done another lesson where we take VAT into account. You'll find it in the link in the description below. So what do we record in the sales journal? Well, this is a journal used to record goods, which is inventory, stock, or merchandise. Those are some words that might be used for goods that are sold on credit or on account. So we only recording here goods that are sold on credit or on account. So we do not record goods that are sold on cash. Okay, we're recording it if it's sold on account or on credit. And they might say on credit or on account, which means the same thing. And remember, it has to be goods, which is inventory, stock, or merchandise. Cash sales of goods or a sale of any other item such as fixed assets is not recorded in the sales journal. That's very important. We're only recording goods whenever you've sold on credit. So what is the format for the sales journal? Well, here is an example. First, we put the name of the company on top here and we put Eldos Flowers as the name of the company. And then we put the name of the journal, which is the sales journal and the period for which the sales journal is prepared. This is an example. We've put December 2021. Now, yours might look slightly different to mine, but you can get the idea here on how it should be presented. You have to put the name of the journal and the period for which it is prepared. And then we begin. We put the document number. That is the first thing that we have here, the first column. Sometimes it's written invoice number. And if you're not given invoice numbers or document numbers, you can just do it in a sequence like 1, 2, 3, 4, 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 3, and so forth. And then day here is the day of the month. If it's the first of the month, you put the 0, 1 as we have done in this example. Sometimes it would be written date and that would be the column where you put the day of the month that you're dealing with. And then here we have data and this is the name of the data that you're selling to on credit. So sometimes it's written data or details, but that's where you record the name of the person to whom you are selling the goods. And then we have folio here. This is a cross reference code and it is usually a number or a combination of numbers and letters. And it is mainly for connecting two different records. So this is showing you where else it is found in another record or where it's taken to or where it's coming from. We're going to leave this one blank for now. And then the next one we have is sales. This is where you record the sales amount, how much you sold it to the person for. That's very important, how much you sold it for. Because when you look at the column here where we have cost of sales, this is how much it costed us to have those inventory that we are selling or that particular inventory that we are selling to this customer. So the sales, you put the amount that we are selling it for, but the cost of sales is how much it costed us to buy those goods or to put it in a condition where we are able to sell it to the customer. And then debtors control, this is how much the debtor actually owes us. So this amount will usually be exactly the same as the one we put under the sales column unless we're taking VAT into account and you'll see it in the lesson that I've alluded to it's in the description below that's when you will see that actually the sales amount and the debtors control amount will be different but if you're told to ignore VAT or there's no VAT applicable then the sales amount will be exactly the same as the debtors control amount but the cost of sales, like I mentioned, it's how much it costed us. So it's going to be a different amount from the sales amount because if you bought goods for 100 rand, you're not going to sell it for 100 rand because you will not make a profit. You're going to sell it for more. So your sales and debtors control amount will always be higher than your cost of sales amount. You'll understand it much better as we go through the example. So let's go ahead and look at this example that we are going to deal with. Here we are. We are told that the information given below was extracted from the records of Eldos Flowers. We are asked to ignore VAT. In the lesson that I've been mentioning, we look at the exact same example, but we have to take VAT into account. So you'll be able to see the difference. But if you begin with this one here, it will give you a very good foundation when looking at the one where you have to take VAT into account. We are asked to record them in the sales journal for December 2021. 
inventory is sold at a markup of 60 percent that's very important as well because that will help us calculate our cost of sales and our sales as well and you'll see how it's done so remember we are only going to focus on items or on goods that were sold on credit everything else we're going to leave out so let's go through these transactions one by one and see how we complete that on the first of the month and what's on red here is the day of the month on the first we sold inventory for cash 7000 rand receipt 001 what do we do with this one do we put it in the sales journal well if you say no you'd be correct because this is a cash sale it's not a credit sale or we did not sell on account so we do not put this one in the sales journal so whatever we don't put in the sales journal i'm going to highlight it in purple and whatever we put in the sales journal once we've done it i'm going to highlight it in black so let's highlight this one in purple because it does not go into the sales journal and then on the second day of the month goods were sold to mm triple on credit for 5000 rand so we sold goods on credit to mm triple for 5000 rand we're not given the document number or the invoice number here so we're just going to do it in sequence from zero one and the day is day zero two here okay so let's go ahead and do that here is our sales journal so we're going to put document number as zero one and the day is zero two as we were given and what is the name of the data let's go back you can see it's mm triple and the amount that we sold the goods for is 5000 rand so we're going to put the 5000 rand there under sales so we put the name of the data mm triple and under sales we put 5000 rand but where else do we put this we're going to put it under data's control remember they will be exactly the same unless we have to take vat into account so we put there 5000 rand as well but what is our cost of sale well that is what we have to calculate so let's go back you can see we are told that inventory is sold at a markup of 60 percent that is what is going to help us to calculate our cost of sales so let's calculate the cost of sales we're going to take the 5000 rand times 100 divided by 160 okay so this is how it's going to look 5000 rand times 100 divided by 160 now why 160 well if i bought it for 100 percent and i put the markup of 60 percent that makes that 5160 percent so i want the 100 percent without the markup to see how much it costed me to buy this inventory that i've just sold so that is why i multiply it by 100 divide by 160 and it gives us an amount of 3125 now if you'd like to understand this one more we've done a lesson on percentages and how to calculate markups and margins you'll find that lesson in the link in the description below so we have our cost of sale here 3125 rand so let's go ahead and do that we've just put it down here 3125 rand and we've just completed that transaction so let's go back and highlight it in black because we've put it into the sales journal you can tick each one as you go through it just to make sure you do not leave something out by mistake but i like to highlight mine just to show as well that i've not left anything out or that we've done everything Okay, on the third of the month, we bought inventory from Ego Capital by check 2500, check 02. What do we do with this one? Do we put it in the sales journal? Well, we do not put it in the sales journal because we are buying inventory here. We are not selling on credit. So let's highlight that one in purple. Now, what I'd encourage you to do here, since you have an idea of how to do the sales journal, and hopefully you do, you can go ahead and pause the video here and attempt to do the rest of the question all the way until the 30th and after you are done continue playing this lesson and gauge how you have done whether you have done everything correctly or where you may have done something incorrectly that will help you understand this topic much better than just following along so if you pause here and try and complete everything on your own and coming back later and comparing your answers to mine that will help you know which areas you need to work more on or if you understand it well and you get everything correctly so go ahead and do that okay i hope you paused and i hope you've completed it so let's go ahead and see how you did on the 8th of the month we sold more goods to mm triple for 2500 on account so here do we put it in the sales journal yes we do because we sold the goods on account or on credit so on the 8th we sold on credit so what do we do we're going to put the day there is day 08 and the name of the data is mm triple so we put 
document number is 02 and the day is 08 and you put the name of the data and then what is the amount there well as you can see it's 2500 rand that we sold it for and it's very important to pay attention to the wording that is used it says we sold to mm triple for 2500 that means that's how much we charged him so we put that under sales as well as under debtors control i hope it's making sense thus far now what about cost of sales how much is our cost of sales well let's go back well if you've done this one here i'm sure you followed the exact same way we did the previous one it's 2500 times 100 divided by 160 and it gives us an amount of 1562 rand 50 cents that is how much it costed us for this particular inventory that we sold so we're going to put that under cost of sales okay we've just completed that one so let's go back and i light that one in black because we've just done it and then on the 9th we bought inventory on credit from shiligo 1000 rand so what do we do with this one here well we do not put it in the sales journal because we bought inventory we were not selling it on credit so we're going to highlight it in purple and then on the 10th we sold inventory on credit to f antioch for 3000 rand okay so here it's also another easy one we're going to put the document number and the day is day 10 so let's do that document number 03 and the day is day 10 and what's the name of the data it's f antioch as we saw and what is the amount that we are dealing with here well it's 3000 rand as you can see here so what is our sales amount it's 3000 and we put the same amount under data's control 3000 rand but what is our cost of sale let's go back and do the easy calculation 3000 rand times 100 divided by 160 it gives us 1875 rand that is how much it costed us for this particular inventory that we sold for 3000 so we put the 1875 rand so let's go back and highlight that one as we have just completed it and then on the 14th day of the month we sold inventory for cash as per receipt 013 12,000 rand well if you attempted this question as i encouraged you to i hope you didn't put this one in because we sold inventory for cash it was not on credit sales journal we only put the amounts that we sold on credit so we highlight this one in purple because it does not go into the sales journal on the 18th day of the month we sold goods to m titan on account the goods were bought for 8,000 rand very important to pay attention to the wording like i mentioned we sold goods to Mr. Titan on account. So this definitely does go into the sales journal because we sold goods and we sold them on credit. So the document number, we put it down and then the day is day 18. So let's go ahead and do that. Document number 04, we're following with the sequence and it's day 18. And what's the name of the data? It's M Titan. And what is the amount here that we're dealing with? Well, let's go back. And what you can see here is that we're told that the goods were bought for 8,000 rand. Now here, if you got it wrong, it's understandable because we have not looked at a similar example in our previous transactions. But if you pay attention here carefully, we're told that the goods were bought for 8,000 rand. If the goods were bought for 8,000 rand, that is our cost of sales. Very important because our sales is the amount that we sold to the data for but the amount that we bought the goods for is the cost of sales which we are given this time around so let's go ahead and put it under cost of sales 8000 right now we have to figure out what the sales amount is well that one is also quite easy we're just going to switch around the numerator and the denominator that we're using and you'll see here it's 8000 rand times 160 divided by 100 and it gives us 12,800. Remember, your sales amount is higher than your cost of sales amount. It's very important. You can see all we did is just switch the denominator and the numerator around to be able to get the sales because we're working from cost of sales to sales. Another way you could have done it is by taking 8,000 rand times 1.6, which stands for 160%. I hope it's making sense what the difference is between this transaction and the other ones that we've been looking at. The goods were bought for 8,000 rand. If you're given the amount that the goods were bought for, then you have to get the sales amount. But if you're given the amount that you sold the goods for, then you have to get the cost of sales amount. So we'll go ahead and put that under sales, 12,800. And under debtors control, 12,800. So let's go back, highlight that one in black because it goes in the sales journal. And then on the 23rd of the month, 
we bought equipment from Chiltree by check, 7,000 rand. That should be fairly easy. It does not go into the sales journal because we are buying equipment here. We're not selling goods on credit. So we'll just highlight that one in purple. And then on the 30th day of the month, Mr. Titan made a full settlement of account after deducting 10% discount. Does this go into the sales journal? No, it does not. We were not selling goods on credit here. A debtor was paying us or was paying the company. This one here, if you looked at our lesson on the cash receipts journal, you'll find it in the link in the description below. You'll see how we deal with this one here, which is where we deal with all cash that is received. But this one here, we're dealing with all goods that were sold on credit. So we're just going to highlight that one in purple because it does not go into the sales journal. And what you can see here, we've done all the transactions that we needed to do. So let's go back to our sales journal. And the last thing that we need to do is just to add up all the columns with the amounts. So that's a sales column, the cost of sales column and the debtors column. So let's add them up. And here you have the amount 23,300. And remember, obviously, the sales total will be exactly the same as the debtors control total here, as we have been explaining and doing it. And we have the cost of sales total. Now, if you want to do a sanity check or to see if you did everything or you added everything correctly, if you take the sales amount of 23,300, multiply that by 100 divided by 160 it will give you the 14,562 rand 50 cents that's just to check if you calculated everything correctly or you added everything correctly i hope it's made sense i hope you've gained value from this lesson you'll find more of our lessons in the links in the description below or the ones that are appearing on the screen if you have gained value consider subscribing to our channel like this video and share it to those you think it might help till next time cheers